Take a glance around you. Now let me ask you a question. Are you really seeing everything in your surroundings? The majority of people would say yes. But the reality is, whether your vision is corrected by lenses or not, the result is the same. Regardless of how hard you're trying, you can't see everything around you. The human eye has a blind spot, a small area on the retina. This tiny area, where the optic nerve passes through the surface of the retina, there are no photoreceptors. We usually aren't conscious of this blind spot because our brain fills this blank area with surrounding images, making our vision field appear seamless. We even have a blind spot or gaps in our perception that keep us from seeing the reality about others and ourselves. Because of this, we are sometimes unaware of the things in our lives that hinder our walk with the Holy Spirit. Believers trip around in life with this blind spot blocking the work of the Holy Spirit in their life. God is moving. And this is a time for us to sharpen our ability to hear his voice. Here are some things that block you from hearing the Holy Spirit. First on this list is something I like to call the spirit of Pharaoh. Moses visited Pharaoh and told him, let my people go. Pharaoh withstood with entrenched stubbornness. So God sent the ten plagues onto Pharaoh's nation. The waters were turned into blood. Frogs swamped forth, covering every inch of the land and entering houses and bedrooms. All over Egypt, bugs crawled forth from the dust to cover the land. Hordes of wild animals destroyed everything in their path. Plague after plague came, and yet Pharaoh remained stubborn till Egypt was utterly devastated. But still, he stubbornly opposed God even up to his downfall. We do an equivalent thing. We become kings of stubborn resistance in our personal lives. A lot of us know the word of God. We know right from wrong. We know what sin is and what is sinful. Yet, we remain stubborn just like Pharaoh. Yes, I know Pharaoh did not have the Holy Spirit, but there is no better example in the Bible of stubbornness than Pharaoh. He received warnings from the man of God, Moses. You have received warnings from the men of God through this Bible, yet we remain stubborn. Stubbornness is a dark spirit. Stubbornness hinders our relationship with God. A stubborn person won't admit when they're wrong. A stubborn person won't seek forgiveness when they have sinned. A stubborn life is a hard life because it is a life not led by the Spirit. In Matthew 11, 28 to 30, Jesus invites us, Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Don't turn a stubborn shoulder away from the Lordship of Christ and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. When we are tender and humble before the Lord, we give room to be led by the Holy Spirit. God can speak to a humble spirit. Now moving on to James 4, 6. But he giveth more grace, wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud, but God giveth grace unto the humble. The spirit of pride has to be the absolute king, the father of all negative and destructive qualities that can enter into our personality. And the truth is, no one is safe from it. No one is immune from it. All Christians, young and old, super saint or not, from the east or from the west, have got to keep a sharp eye on this negative quality and do everything they can not to let the spirit of pride get a foothold, a grip 
into their personalities. Pride says to God, I am more important than you. Pride would have its own way rather than the Lord's way. God alone is worthy of receiving honor, glory and praise. But pride attempts to steal the glory of God. Isaiah 42 verse 8 I am the Lord, that is my name. My glory I will not share with another. My glory I will not give to another. Neither my praise to graven images. God does not share his glory with anyone. A humble person says, Have your way with me, Holy Spirit. And a prideful person says, This is what I'll do next. This is my next move. If we have any pride at all, God is going to resist us. How do we expect to be led by the Spirit if God is resisting us? The verse we have just read says God resists the proud. The Holy Spirit is God. And if you have a proud spirit, the Holy Spirit is resisting you. You're living a life without the Holy Spirit. Pride blocks the voice of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit can do little or nothing at all in someone that is full of pride. One verse that can help you deal with the spirit of pride is John 15, 5. It states, Apart from me, you can do nothing. Another version says, Without me, you can do nothing. It clearly tells us how dependent we are on God. That we need him to do absolutely everything. Everything we take for granted. Everything we do consciously and subconsciously. We need him to do. To breathe. To walk. To succeed. Every single thing that you are the best at. It's because of him. The Bible is so clear. It doesn't say without me you can do some things. It says without me you can do nothing. There is no room in that verse for interpretation. We don't need to go to its Greek origin or Hebrew origin. We are utterly dependent on the Lord Jesus Christ in everything that we do. Therefore, pride has no place in our lives. You see, pride was the first sin ever to be committed. When the devil stood up and said, I will, I will, I will. So if someone has a proud spirit, he is behaving more like the devil than Jesus Christ. This is why the Bible says God resisteth the proud. Lastly, grieving the Holy Spirit. Sin grieves the Holy Spirit. And this is one of the biggest hindrances to the believer. Matthew 6, 14 to 15. For if you forgive men, their trespasses your heavenly father will also forgive you but if you forgive not men their trespasses neither will your father forgive your trespasses are you grieving the holy spirit because your sins have not been forgiven this is a divine law unforgiveness is a sin and grieves the holy spirit forgiving people is the only condition that god has put down for our sins to be forgiven by him and the truth be told no one has had more to forgive than god every sin you have ever committed is a sin against him each of these sins played a part in the awful suffering of jesus christ on the cross that is true not only for your sins but for every sin that every believer has ever committed now just think how much god has had to forgive in the lifespan of humanity. Unforgiveness in your heart can be a barrier for the Holy Spirit to fill you and to start working in your life. The Holy Spirit teaches us unless we learn to forgive others, God will not restore our fellowship with Him. Therefore, we cannot live a life together in the Spirit. What you need to know is that God still speaks. In John 16, 13, it says, He will guide you unto all truth, for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you 
things to come. Look at this wonderful phrase that Jesus Christ said, he shall speak, he will speak. Jesus told us and gave us good reason to believe that we can expect the voice of God, the ministry of the Holy Spirit to speak to us. Now, what I need you to know is that the Holy Spirit is a gentleman and he's gentle, he leads. He will speak softly to our hearts, not bossly or loudly. Sometimes he speaks so softly that we can miss it. It's ever so slight, it's ever so faint, but over time you develop experience to recognize the voice of God. God is never pushy or forceful. He never bullies you into anything. He will not press you. That's the enemy's job. That's the devil's job. This is why we need to have a sensitivity to the Holy Spirit. There is no place for that spirit of Pharaoh in our life, that hard stubbornness to know the word of God, yet to reject it, to know truth, yet to stick to your own way.